Hello everyone, welcome to another GMAT Club live session. My name is Selvi Alaburanova and we will be having Shruti from Goal is B joining us today. And yeah, we're going to be talking about ISB essays. The last time we went live with Goal is B, we talked about um, short-term and long-term MBA goals. But this time we're going to be talking about a lot of other things related, related to the essay. So if you have questions, feel free to comment them down below. You already know the drill and I'll be pinning them up one by one. Let me send a request to Goal is B to join. And yeah, how is everyone doing? Happy Diwali to our Indian audience. Hello. Hello. Oh, I think the camera got flipped. Yeah, this one I'm trying to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Hi, Shruti. Happy Diwali. Actually, I wanted to say that first. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a long while since we had a live session. I was actually going yes. through a previous live session where we talked about uh, short-term and long-term MBA goals. So I think we have a lot to talk about today. <laughs> I can yes, we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself once again? I guess that we do have new users joining in. So. I am Shruti. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. So I am uh, the consultant with the Goal is B, and I'll be taking up uh, your questions, and we'll be discussing the ISP essays. The, the next deadline is due 27 November, so I hope you've all started with, the, you know, with your essays and started with the rest of the preparation. So all the best, and please feel free to pour in your questions. We'll be taking them up. Uh, as in uh, as in how the discussion goes. Awesome. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, ISB has two essays, right? One is related to the short-term and long-term goals, and the other is more about how one adds value to their program. So could you talk a little bit more about these two questions and like what exactly is ISB looking for in these essays? Yeah. So the two essays, one is about, you know, the peer learning experience at ISB, which is highly valued. And uh, so ISB wants to look at how you will add value as an uh, as an applicant, as a student to the rest of the cohort. You know, what do you bring uh, as which is unique and which will actually contribute to the growth of the rest of the cohort as well. So that is the that is what the first essay looks at. And they do specifically mention that they are looking at the personal as well as the professional qualities. So we need to, uh, you know, be very sure that we have a uh, good homework on both of these qualities. And the second essay, which is always uh, mostly, you know, towards the goals and how ISP will help you achieve those goals. So what the school wants to look at over here is, you know, how well uh, and how clear you are about your goals, how have you planned your career ahead, and uh, going forward, how will ISB or the MBA program exactly help you? So, again, there's a lot of homework that needs to be done on this essay as well. So, as far as, you know, what the school wants to look into is a very candid response. They do appreciate. So, from my experience, what I've seen is that, you know, a candid response, a well-thought-out response, and a well-researched response is what will really add value to both the essay topics. And how uh, important, important are these essays in the overall application? Does it hold a huge weighting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, what the school, you know, uh, mentions very specifically is that there are five components that they're looking at. So one is your academic profile, the GMAT or the GRE score, then your essays, your work experience. Along with that, they will also look at what your recommenders have to say about you. So these five things out of these essays do have a very substantial role. They help you. This is a very good way of, you know, bringing out your story. Whatever the GMAT score or the GRE score you have, if in case you you know the story is uh, put out very thoughtfully and you've uh, spent enough time, ample uh, research is conducted, then you would uh, definitely look at a good result post, uh, you know, putting in that particular, uh, you know, response towards the essay topics. 
again the point over here is that it is one of the five things so the gmat or the gre score is definitely important you need to understand what pool you represent so you know one is a diverse uh, applicant pool and another is the rest of the applicants which are coming from very specific career streams so according to the career streams you need to understand that your gmat and gre score and your academic profile has a definite weightage to it the essay cannot overpower everything but yes it will definitely help you substantiate and uh, you know stand out amongst the other people who are coming with strong gmat and gre scores so you know there's a competition at all the levels one is whether you have a gmat or a gre score a strong gmat or not that is one level of uh, discussion the second level of discussion is yes that there are so many applicants who are actually coming up with uh, if you look at the statistics the indian applicants they are the ones who score the maximum on the gmat or the gre test so they are actually coming up with very strong scores now there that sa really helps you you know create that edge create that story you know create create that connect with the uh, reader and um, once you have that evaluation so the essay will help you stand out so someone here is asking uh, ma'am i'm in my first year of bba when would be the right time for me to start my preparation for gmat and like a follow up when do you think is the right time to also start writing your essays Yeah. So, summer. If you're in your first year of PBA, that means you are uh, technically looking at the ISB YLP intake, which would be applicable for you in the second year or the third year of your um, BBA course. So, in case you are applying to the, so you can apply to the YLP course, you know, uh, twice. That is, one is your pre-final and one is your final uh, year of your undergraduation. so it is a stage wise process for the first stage you do not need to submit a gmat or gre so you need to focus right now i think you need to focus on your grades on the other activities that you are involved in so that you do get a good uh, application on the stage 1 once you have a shortlist on the stage 1 your uh, gmat score is required at the stage 2 so you can probably start preparing for the gmat exam and uh, in case you want to take it right away you can because the gmat score is valid for 5 years however if in case you want to just you know prepare and keep yourself ready and take it as it goes you can actually stagger it till your third year as well so it depends on when you are applying to the ylp intake and accordingly you can uh, stagger your gmat so start to prepare your essays the time you decide you want to apply to ylp so the essay topics they usually change almost uh, every year or every second year so wait up for the cycle to open up uh, if you are in your pre final or your final year get the actual essay topics and then start your homework but again the basic homework is you know working on yourself as an applicant working on yourself as a leadership uh, you know for your leadership profile things that you are involved in apart from your uh, academics so these are the things that you can do right away these are things you sh- you must you know work hard on identifying your passions uh trying to pursue them at the best level possible so that you have a good story to put in just writing the essay is uh, essay is not about just you know nice words and uh, pretty vocabulary it's more about the content it's more about what you have to say what you bring to the cohort as an individual uh someone asked regarding the previous point which you mentioned that there are five components so they said that they have four out of those five like pretty much done with but their gmat is quite terrible so how should they go about that do you think they should apply yeah. so <laughs> so you would technically gmat is quite terrible i would assume that it is you know quite below the um, the average gmat of the school so it's best to be close to the average if not a 7 10 then okay at least a 680 in uh, in case uh, depends on your profile but a safe score is going to be anywhere close to 700 or 710 again i am not very sure on what your academic profile is assuming that your academics are also uh, average then an average gmat score the average that the school has in the past is something that you must aspire for so work on uh, work hard on your gmat first at least if not 7, 710 come up till 690 before you apply don't go too below and expect wonders to happen okay uh coming back to the essays so let's talk about the first essay a little bit what do you think is the best way to go about that particular question 
so the first essay talks about the uh, your value addition to the peer learning experience of the class and it asks about you know how from your uh, professional experience as well as your personal capabilities would you be able to contribute to the class so it's best to first you know analyze as to what are your professional capabilities what are the real takeaways that you have as a professional so you know for example let's take an example you are a ca a chartered accountant most of the uh, cas would be working in the audit uh, profile or you know something in the audit center now having said that it is not the same there must be something in terms of the industries that you are working with you know some value add that you have gained over your um, work experience the duration that you have spent with different companies probably you have worked on a certain uh, you know aspect of the audit very well to understand you know how businesses work so look at it at a deeper level than just adding words like leadership experience i've got team work experience and i've got you know multicultural experience and uh, worked across geographies these are the common cliches that are the jargons which are used in the essays so go a level beyond that and try and identify and pinpoint those exact things which will really help you add value as a professional within a cohort which is actually as smart or even smarter than you are so these people are everybody is going to come in with a very uh, niche value add even if they are from the same professional background so you need to identify your niche as a professional your uh, takeaways uh, in terms of your professional skills similarly at the personal level you know everybody has friends everybody has siblings so a normal sibling story will probably not do good over here i need to go deeper and identify that how as an individual i would be able to you know add value to a cohort which is actually self equipped and uh, where do you really create that niche for yourself so once that homework is done i think the essay is a breeze after that so the main thing is the homework and the research that you need to do got someone here asks uh, bhavna she asks what weight do internships carry in case of yop intake um and I'm, i'm sorry uh, you need to please repeat the question once uh, i'm just going to pin it here so she wrote what weight do internships carry in case of yop okay for the yop intake but in case your internships are highly technical uh, i am not too sure of you know what in, uh, value it would add it would just uh, add as much value to show that yes you are focused on uh, doing well in whatever career you choose to pursue because you will be taking up a certain course of action over the next two years before you actually join the pgp program so internships will definitely add value for you to show that yes you are a focused individual and you do go an extra mile so technically there's no brownie points that an internship will bring if you have other ways to show that you are a committed individual and you know professionally you are very well connected with what you want to do and you have other plans then you can go ahead with that so that's that's how i'll have a take on the internships part got it someone then really asked they i mean they stated but let's make this a question uh the person wrote uh i was not a part of leadership roles in my professional experience but of course they want to apply for such roles but is this a setback whenever they write about essays and their work experience if they've never had a proper leadership role yeah a leadership role as such is uh, quite underestimated or maybe let me say that it is overestimated uh you technically don't have to be a project manager to be able to say that you are you have a leadership role in case you know you have just uh, had a certain instance where you have stood up for your team at a certain point in time so it's not the uh, you know the extent of recognition that you get through that leadership role the designation or something that uh, really uh, gets you the brownie points within your organization but if personally you've been able to you know stand up for your team stand up for your manager maybe he was down with something you know maybe covid or had to be absent somewhere you were able to take a leader uh, lead, you know take a lead build the project take it forward that's enough for a leadership role now the point is that what value do you bring out of that what are the lessons that you have learned out of that so that is more important than technically you know on a cliched uh, leadership role uh, everybody does not have that and that is not what the school is looking for they are looking at 
your manifestation of leadership so you can have it in any way it's not essentially a certain specific role that you need to take away to the uh, application got it okay uh, i got a question here so uh, is it important i mean should you be very specific with the things that you've done in your work ex or is it fine like you know if you kind of generalize things a little bit in your essays uh, see the essay is around 400 words so we can't be really specific about everything so you have to pick and choose you have to you know really pick that what is a part of um, you know the real story that you bring forward if it is really important then i would suggest that you need to be specific because that really shows uh, that you've been a part of it the lessons you've learned you will be able to share the story in a lot of detail but yes given the uh, word limit you cannot be specific about everything so given the content that you want to you know cover within your essay you need to decide and prioritize as to what you want to be specific with and the rest that you would probably choose to be you know generic about uh, is this words limit that you mentioned like is it like um like super serious like you have to stick to 400 words or it's fine if you go a bit uh, you know uh age piche age piche is that how you say it in hindi sorry my hindi is bad <laughs> yeah Piche is good. Age, the system will not allow you to add any more, so you lose out on that content. So it's best to be within 400 words and try and be, you know, as specific as possible and probably as concise as possible. Um, exactly. So that actually adds the onus of you know prioritizing very well and planning very well. So you need to plan your essays before you sit down to uh, really put in the generic versus the specific stuff. so in case you are overshooting then of course you will have to let go of some stories but uh, as a technical standpoint on the application point of view uh, it is not suggested that you should go beyond 400 words the system will not allow it so it will not you know they will not be able to see it even if you are able to type it out so it's always best to stay within the word limit got it okay uh someone asked here is operations and quality management experience in core manufacturing field can that add value to my profile or profile or will i need other certifications uh you don't need certifications to just showcase a profile you need to see where you're coming from and then have a plan for your career going forward so isb mba or any mba for that matter you know they are not coming to you very easily so you need to have your career mapped out if you have that mapped out then you will already know what certifications you would require so for example if you are coming from a manufacturing uh, background and that to in operations then probably you would already be certified on six sigma and you would already be uh, you know well versed with the operations uh, the operations methodologies that are followed in the manufacturing field now going forward are you planning to stick to manufacturing are you planning to go to consulting with a digital 4.0 are you really well versed with what digital 4.0 is all about so that all of that is going to be very important when you plan what certifications you want so don't go in for anything unless you know it really adds value or connects with what you want to do in the future it is very important to first map out your future and then go backwards to see what other skills you require it's actually an investment in your uh, achieving that career the mba is just one part of that planning if you're planning to shift industries or shift roles there are so many other things that you would probably require on your resume as well as in your practical skill sets to be able to you know suit the recruiters so look at it from the recruiter point of view the end goal that you want to uh, go in for and then go backwards to plan as to what skills do you lack and what uh, certifications you should go in for so that i think is a more thought out approach than just uh, looking good on paper before we jumped for the, you know the next live questions that we've got uh could we talk uh, quickly about the second uh, essay question which is related to the short term and long term goals like you know how specific do you have to be with these goals so on and so forth i think we talked about it in our previous live session like in quite descriptive way but you can maybe you know like talk about it like a minute or so 
yes so short term and long term goals is uh, you know something that is really important for the mba application so if you want a sixth factor to add on to your uh, you know the five factors that we talked about your short term and long term goals really really would be important over there now uh, having thought about that short term goals you should be you could be you know as specific as possible long term goals it is okay if you are not that specific you know even the school understands you know that the career uh, will shape up as it comes and having a vision though is important so have a vision for your long term goal Uh, don't be totally flexible about anything that comes your way but be quite specific about your short term goals that is really going to uh, be very important throughout uh, the discussion on your um, maybe your interviews or your evaluation of your application you know from the standpoint of where you're coming from most of the one year programs if we you know look at the value add that the applicants are seeking they are the applicants are actually looking at taking a lateral shift so when you're taking a lateral shift having a very clear cut uh, agenda for what you plan to do in the next one year and where you want to go and how you have prepared for that particular transition post mba is something that everybody you know even the school is going to be very uh, realistically looking at so be specific about the short term goals as much as possible uh, do your homework on that and uh, there are so many uh, you know options available today so do your homework well you should have pinpointed the kind of skills that you are coming with what is uh, a lateral role that you know you would uh, fit into and how have you prepared for that so all that is very important for your second essay uh regarding the language so uh um, how exactly should you write it like can you write it the way you speak you know or does it have to be in a particular way like in a formal manner what does isp look for usually in the essays the candid is a very good thing you need to be uh, able to show that yes you have uh, done the research and it is your uh, you know your words uh, which are coming through the application again being informal is something that we would not recommend so be formal for sure but be candid and be explicit in terms of what you want to say again the choice of words in terms of you know normal business language is more than enough because you need to have clarity in thoughts and how you put it on paper rather than the choice of words in terms of how beautiful those words are and how difficult those words are and um, you know how far out they uh, feature in the dictionary that is probably not important any more in any of these schools so not even isb for every school what you're looking for is the real thing that you're coming with what is the real story what are the real things that you want to discuss about yourself and be formal but uh, but be candid for sure and is there any sort of framework that one should stick with or there's nothing as such a good framework would be the star framework as a reference so almost everybody knows about the star framework you know pick up the situation first uh, then uh, look at you know what was what was it that was supposed to be done ideally and then go ahead with uh, looking at the challenges that were there in that particular situation how you you could uh, take up the charge and this is actually more appropriate for a leadership uh, description so how you could pick up the charge and take charge of that situation and what are the actions that you took what is it that you actually did and how did the whole uh, thing pan out at the end so that is a star framework works very well for the uh, for the leadership stories for other types of stories you know in case you are talking about uh, something uh, again in a 400 word essay you can actually not follow the star framework very explicitly throughout the essay in case you are planning to put up you know four or five or six examples the star framework would become very very lengthy so you'll have to be very choosy with the uh, the version of the framework that you use so have a longer version and then make it crisp 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 keep on uh, deleting the things and avoiding the things that would actually be well understood by the uh, readers themselves things which are just adding meat to the whole description but not adding meat to the story so once you go on that editing spree you will probably be able to shorten it 
but the star framework is uh, very much uh, appreciated it is very much explicit it addresses the questions but um, another thing over here is for example let us take a, take the first question that talks about you know the peer learning and how will you add value to the peer learning environment at isp through your personal and uh, professional skills now if i look at this question and i just look at a story in the star framework i can actually use up all the 400 words in one story itself or maybe you know use the 200 words for two stories and that's that's about it but probably over here you need to look at the question first so once you look at the question you need to see that what are the things that you want to put across to the uh, committee and then you know phrase your story or phrase that whole incident on the capability framework as such you know what is the real capability that you bring to the table not the story not uh, what happened and how it happened but more in terms of uh, you know what is the capability that you want to show and how will it add value to the cohort so if you go with that framework and then answer the question and then the best way is to share your just your response with somebody you know ask a third party to just read the answer and say that okay what is the question that i'm trying to answer this this ident if you identifies the question correctly that means you've done a good job with the essay so that's how your essay should be framed rather than you know just telling a story and not connecting it to the question that was asked so the whole idea is that you need to be able to address the question not focus on your story alone people are so obsessed with their own stories and their own uh, you know uh, their their own narrative over there that they forget what the question is asking about so just keep an eye on both and then build a balance on that Oh, one last question. So, what is one thing that you've noticed, especially in the first drafts, that you know students write, but you wish they did not? You know, that something like it's like, don't write this in the essays, please. You know, I'll I'll take it essay by essay. So, for the first essay, the first thing that you know people would write, and we don't want that story over there is a childhood story or a sibling story. you know something that you did in the childhood and you think that it was so important that you need to bring it up to the adcom so remember that you know you are uh, applying as who you are now so what you did in your childhood probably is uh, something that is important for your family or parents but will it really add value towards your leadership skills now think about it another thing is the jargons i bring leadership capabilities and i bring uh, team work capabilities and i i also have uh, uh what do you call that collaboration skills and worked across geographies so these are jargons which are overused over um, and under uh, represented so you know it's it's more to go ahead uh, it's better to go ahead with a show and tell kind of a framework if you can so instead of saying that you have leadership skills put the story across so that we can see those leadership skills in action so that will add much more value you don't need to tell the reader that this is about leadership skills they will understand themselves another thing that we see in the second essay is that um, you know people they start off with re narrating their resume so understand that when the uh, you know the reader is coming towards your essay he's already read your application so he will not forget what the application and your resume was like so what your work experience were like so you don't need to reiterate all of that and use up the valuable space so you know those 400 words is like uh, valuable real estate so we can't lose on that real estate and uh, we can't use it at places which will not add value we've already said that let us not repeat it and maybe in terms of goals an overused goal is strategy consulting and product management use it only if it connects with what you want to do and how you have prepared for your future otherwise there are so many other roles that are offered across business schools you know you need to just conduct your research just because isb the maximum hiring is uh, for uh, consulting or product management doesn't mean that everybody is equipped to get into a consulting or a product management you can get into that but with the relevant preparation if that is there then go ahead and write it otherwise then you write it and you put to the preparation vice versa so these are some overused things that we wish people don't write in their applications just awesome. just like that uh, is there a way that uh, you know the users can reach out to you because i i could see a lot of questions that were not related to the essay but since we were talking about the essays today 
uh, you know, I guess they can maybe ask the questions directly to you. So if you can give, like, tell the email address or something like that, and I can comment it down here, that would be great. Yeah. So the email address is contact at the rate uh, goal is com, And you could always go to our website and schedule a call. So we have an hour uh, long schedule on a daily basis for uh, the calls. And uh, you could, um, anybody could connect for any questions they have. It is irrelevant of whether you are taking up a package or not. So whatever queries you would have, we would be accepting those. Got it. Oh, is it up already? Did you I, click? I did. I did. Let me just share it again. I'm sorry. Is it there now? I'm checking. One second. No. <laughs> did you press the send button like, on the keyboard? I did. I did. Uh, wasn't posted it says could you post it for me yeah I, I, what i'll do is uh this slide will be saved as is so i'll add it in the description so if anyone wants to contact you directly they will know how to. yeah but awesome thank you so much once again for joining the live session it was great to have you here it, i mean it's also nice to sort of use my hindi language skills with someone because usually no one else understands only <laughs> But yeah, it was really nice talking to you. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.